Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Today we're reading from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila Chapter 18 Continuing the Lord's visit to Sri Vrindavan, text 114. We'll do it together. Ladinya samvid ashlishta. Okay, don't it does look different, doesn't it? Ladinya samvirashlishta Satchidananda Isvara Svavidya samrito jiva Sanklesha nirakaraka Ladinya samvirashlishta Satchidananda Isvara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanklesha Nirakaraka Marinya Samrashtista Satchidananda Isvara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanghesa Nirakaraka Radinya Samrita Slista Satchirananda Ispara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanghesha Nidakarka Ladinya Samvira Sista Satchirananda Ishvara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanghesha Nidakarka Radinya Samvira Shrista Satchirananda Ishvara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanghesha Nirakaraka Radinya Samvira Shrista Satchirananda Ishvara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanghesha Nirakaraka Ladinya Samvira Shrista Satchirananda Ishvara Svavidya Samrito Jiva Sanghesha Nidakaraka Ladinya by the Ladini potency Samvit by the Samvit potency Ashlishtaha surrounded Satchit Ananda always transcendentally blissful Isparaha the Supreme Controller, Supreme Controller. Sva, Sva. Om. Om Avidya, Avidya. By, ignorance. by Ignorance Samrita, Samrita. Surrounded. Surrounded Jiva, Jiva. The, living the Living Entity Sanklesha, Sanklesha. Of the Threefold Miseries, the threefold miseries. Nikara. Nikara 
of the multitude. Akaraha, the mind. Translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller, is always full of transcendental bliss and is accompanied by the potencies known as Ladini and Samvit. The conditioned soul, however, is always covered by ignorance and embarrassed by the threefold miseries of life. Thus, he is a treasure house of all kinds of tribulations. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. This is a quotation of Vishnu Swami, is cited by Sridhar Swami in Sridhar Swami's Bhavarti Deepika commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 176. <laughs> This verse is um, used as evidence to the previous part of the story. A lot of the times, commentators, and especially uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj uses this technique a lot in, Sh in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Srila Prabhupada also uses it all throughout his purports. Make a point, describe a pastime, make a point, and then substantiate that concept with a verse from Shastra. Explain it. Use a verse for evidence. So that's what this is. This is just a, we kind of got like an orphan concept in this particular assignment. Uh, so let me go back to text 111, Pran, and just uh, read a few of the verses to bring it up to speed or to put, the, to put this verse into context. You remember that uh, when Lord Chaitanya was staying at a Kurgat, all of a sudden one day there was a tumultuous crowd of people that came there and said, oh, we saw Krishna. Every night he comes to Kaliyagat, and we can see the, the, the Kaliya serpent. We can see Krishna dancing on his heads and the sparkling of the jewels and Krishna dancing on top. And then it was revealed that this was actually a fisherman and that everybody was in illusion about what they were seeing. And Lord Chaitanya explained this. And then they said, but you are Krishna. And this is where it picks up. Uh, what did I say, 111? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately exclaimed, when they, the people said in 110, you have appeared in Vrindavan as an incarnation of Krishna. Just by seeing you, everyone is now liberated. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately exclaimed, Vishnu, Vishnu, do not call me the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A jiva cannot become Krishna at any time. Do not even say such a thing. A sannyasi in the renounced order is certainly part and parcel of the complete whole, just as the shining molecular particle of sunshine is part and parcel of the sun itself. Krishna is like the sun, full of six opulences, but the living entity is only a fragment of the complete whole. A living entity and the absolute personality of God are never to be considered equal, just as a fragmental spark can never be considered the original flame. And then there's this verse. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller, is always full of transcendental bliss, and is accompanied by the potencies known as Hladini and Samvit. The conditioned soul, however, is always covered by ignorance and embarrassed by the threefold miseries of life. Thus, he is a treasure house of all kinds of tribulations. So this verse is making a vast distinction between the personality of Godhead and the living entities, which is the point that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is trying to make. We know that verse, yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata bhutanama dharmasya tada anam sujamiham paritanaya sadhanam vinashaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanataya sambhavami yuge yuge. Dharma samstarpanataya means that one of his missions as an incarnation of the Lord is to establish dharma. And a big part 
an integral part of the Vedic canon of all concepts throughout all the Vedas is the difference between the living entity and the Supreme Lord. Another big part is the similarity between the Supreme Lord and the living entities as the same internal potency. <clears throat> That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Atintya Beta Beta Tattva explanations are so sublime. But in this particular instance, the people were thinking they were seeing Krishna. Then they were thinking he was Krishna, and he's trying to emphasize the difference in this particular part. So when I got a verse with this as the purport, this quotation of Vishnu Swami is cited in Sridhar Swami's Bhavarti Deepika commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam 176. There wasn't a whole lot to go on in my initial view. Oh, one sentence purport. So I followed the trail and went to 176. Uh, also checked out Sridhar Swami. This is Sridhar Swami's commentary on Vishnu Swami's commentary on this verse. I found a nice little quote about both of them. Both Jiva Goswami in his Bhagavat Sandarbha and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in his Chaitanya Charitamrita looked to Sripad Vishnu Swami for inspiration to establish the essential difference between God and the individual souls and quote from Sarva Gyanta Shukta, his commentary on the Vedanta. Vishnu Swami, uh, maybe a month ago, I gave that class on the Vallabhacharya Sampradaya and how I traveled with them throughout Braj, showed a slideshow of bathing of Govardhan just as a remembrance. That Sampradaya is the Vallabhacharya Sampradaya now, but the previous Acharya was one of them, one of the main ones was Vishnu Swami. He lived like around 1300, 100 years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Oh no, that was Sridhar Swami who wrote the commentary on his commentary. He lived at the, in the third century, Vishnu Swami, and wrote a commentary on Vedanta. And this verse was used by him in his commentary. And Sridhar Swami is quoting it in his commentary on this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 176. So it's a tapestry. It's a, it's a network of evidences, commentaries, and Vedic concepts. What are we on? 176. 176. This is a description of Srila Vyasadeva just after he had heard from Narada Muni, his spiritual master. You remember in earlier chapters, it was described that Vyasadeva, even after compiling four Vedas, 108 Upanishads, 17 Puranas, Itihasas, all kinds of histories, the Vedanta Sutra, hundreds and thousands of verses and descriptions and, and, and knowledge, he was still feeling bereft. He wasn't feeling fulfilled. He, feel, he felt like he hadn't completed his task. And Narada Imoni explained to him why, going to the core of the problem. So Vyasadev sat down on the banks of the Sarasvati. Let me read these verses. This is a description of where we are going into this verse. In that place, Sri Vyasadev, in his own ashram, which was surrounded by berry trees, sat down to meditate after touching water for purification. This is right after Narada had left. Thus, he fixed his mind, perfectly engaging it by the linking in devotional service, bhakti yoga, without any tinge of materialism. And thus, he saw the absolute personality of Godhead along with his external energy, which was under full control. Due to this external energy, the living entity, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, 
thinks himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. These miseries of the living entity, which is this verse, the material miseries of the living entity, which are superfluous to him, can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the masses of people do not know this. And therefore, the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the supreme truth. Simply by giving oral reception to this Vedic literature, the feeling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna the personality of God had sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion, and fearfulness. The great sage Vyasadeva, after compiling the Srimad Bhagavatam and revising it, taught it to his own son, Sri Sukadeva Goswami, who was already engaged in self-realization. So this puts the, the, the verse of these commentaries on Lord Chaitanya's verse more into context, and let's read the purport to this verse, 176. The material miseries of the living entity, which are superfluous to him, can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. Because the mass of people do not know this, therefore the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the supreme truth. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Sri Vyasadeva saw the all-perfect personality of Godhead. This statement suggests that the complete unit of the personality of Godhead includes his parts and parcels also. He saw, therefore, his different energies, namely the internal energy, the marginal energy, and the external energy. He also saw his different plenary portions and parts of the plenary portions, namely his different incarnations also. And he specifically observed the unwanted miseries of the conditioned souls who are bewildered by the external energy. And at last he saw the remedial measure for the conditioned souls, namely the process of devotional service. It is a great transcendental science and begins with the process of hearing and chanting the name, fame, glory, etc. of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Revival of the dormant affection for and love of Godhead does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but is solely and wholly depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. When the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. Such mitigation of material affection does not wait for the development of transcendental knowledge. Rather, knowledge is dependent on devotional service for the ultimate realization of the supreme truth. So when Vyasadeva was in his meditation, after hearing from Narada, his inspiration of what to write changed from what he had previously written. And Srimad Bhagavatam is therefore considered the cream of the Vedic knowledge. One of the nice points that Prabhupada made in that purport was that it's not a mechanical experience. But when the Lord is pleased by the sincere effort of the devotee, then he bestows his mercy. And in this month, of course, we know that those two inches are symbolic of this reciprocation between the Lord and the living entities. Mother Yasoda wanted to bind Krishna. Krishna didn't give his mercy at first. And no matter what everybody in the village did. They couldn't bind him. It was impossible. The living entity can never bind the Lord. But after seeing her sincere efforts, time and time again, getting all the different ropes together, the sweat falling from her body, her hair became disheveled, the flowers in her, I mean, she really exerted herself. She was trying everything she could because she really wanted to teach him a lesson. 
that he shouldn't steal that butter, shouldn't become a thief. Finally, that example, when, he, when, when, when her, her effort pleased the Lord, then he decided, okay, go ahead and find me. Oh Lord, the entire universe was created by Lord Brahma, who was born from your abdomen, which was bound with a rope by Mother Yasoda. To this rope I offer my humble obeisances. I offer my obeisances to your most beloved Srimati Radharani and to your unlimited pastimes. We're paying our obeisances in Gaudiya Vaishnavism to a rope. Some people may think that's odd, but the, the sweetness. No ordinary. No, no ordinary rope at all. Um, this line or, or uh, trail that I followed, it kind of turned into like one of those descriptions where you have the verse, like if you, if you have those uh, charts, president, vice president, secretary of state, all the different governmental uh, positions as it goes down the line. This was the verse by Lord Chaitanya, then the commentary by Vishnu Swami, the commentary on that by Sridhar Swami, the, con the, the, the verse itself, Vyasadev, teaching it to uh, Sukadev, and simultaneous to all of this, in my own studies, uh, last year, from October 2019 till October 2020, I conducted an online course studying the entire first canto. From January this uh, 2021 to June, we'll do the second canto. It's 10 chapters. So that's what I've been studying for the last few months um, in my own studies. And some of the verses and purports that I'm reading perfectly blend, in, as they often do, into these verses. So I want to share some of those. This is Sukadev Goswami. He first spoke a few verses, a few chapters, actually, to uh, Maharaj Parikit, and then Maharaj Parikit made further, further inquiries. He spoke about his wonderful question, what should a man do when he's just about to die? What should he chant? Who should he worship? And he answered uh, a bit there. And then Maharaj Parikit asked him more questions and wanted to know more about the creation. So these verses and these purports kind of deal with Sukadev Goswami, who learned Srimad Bhagavatam from Vyasadeva that we just read about in the previous verse, and his prayer to Krishna to be able to speak properly. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Srila Vyasadeva, the incarnation of Vasudeva, who compiled the Vedic literatures. The pure devotees drink up the nectarian transcendental knowledge dropping from the lotus-like mouth of the Lord. Purport. In pursuance of the specific utterance Vedase, or the compiler of the system of transcendental knowledge, Srila Sridhar Swami has commented that the respectful obeisances are offered to Srila Vyasadeva, who is the incarnation of Vasudeva. Sri Shiva Jiva Goswami has further agreed to this, but Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur has made a further advance. Now listen to how tasty Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur considers these discourses. Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur has made a further advance, namely that the nectar from the mouth of Lord Krishna is transferred to his different consorts. And thus they learn the finer arts of music, dance, dressing, decorations, and all such things that are relished by the Lord. Such music, dance, decorations enjoyed by the Lord are certainly not anything mundane, because the Lord has addressed in the very beginning as para, or transcendental. This transcendental knowledge is unknown to the forgotten conditioned souls. Srila Vyasadeva, who is the incarnation of the Lord, thus compiled the Vedic literatures to revive the lost memory of the conditioned souls about their eternal relation with the Lord. One should therefore try to understand this Vedic scriptures or the nectar transferred by the Lord to his consorts in the conjugal humor from the lotus-like mouth of Vyasadeva or Sukadeva. 
by gradual development of transcendental knowledge, one can rise to the stage of the transcendental arts, of music and dance displayed by the Lord in his Rasa Lila. But without the Vedic knowledge, one can hardly understand the transcendental nature of the Lord's Rasa dance and music. The pure devotees of the Lord, however, can fully relish the nectar in the form of the profound philosophical discourses and in the form of kissing of the Lord in the Rasa dance, as there is no mundane distinction between the two. That's a stretch <laughs> to say that these discourses spoken by Sukadev Goswami, translated and, and purported by Srila Prabhupada, are the same nectar coming from the mouth of the Lord and transferred to his consorts in the Rasa dance. That's the taste that, that, has, that Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur has developed. So the whole network of Vedic literatures, the commentaries by the, by the, the, the verses themselves, the commentaries by acharyas. You can see how one sampradaya, Sridhar Swami, was actually not a Gaudiya Vaishnava because he was prior to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As a matter of fact, in the Back to Godhead, January, February two, uh, 2020, there was an article by Satyaraj about Sridhar Swami. He was actually a, a, a Vaishnava, but he was part of the Mayavadi Sampradaya, because at that time Mayavad was so influential. So his commentaries have a lot of Mayavad influence, but he also inserts uh, Vaishnavism in them and not Mayavad philosophy to try and pull them slowly in this direction. And he's quoting, he's from the 13th century, he's quoting back to another Sampradaya, Vishnu Swami from 3rd century BC, who was part of the Vallabhacharya Sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya. So truth is truth, but just as Krishna danced with millions of gopis, each individual person has a relationship with him and it's all unlimited. And when he transfers, when he kisses them, Obviously, the nectar from his mouth mixes with the nectar from their mouths, and they receive that nectar from his mouth individually and, and, and see a reality presented accordingly. Every living entity is like that, ultimately, with the Supreme Lord. How to understand the Vedas, however, is also another part of the science. So I want to read one more purport from 245, the verse in purport. Again, Sukadeva Goswami. How it comes down. My dear king, Brahma, the firstborn, on being questioned by Narada, exactly apprised him on the subject as it has been directly spoken by the Lord to his own son, who was impregnated with Vedic knowledge from his very birth. So now, just by reading this, we got an, into another cycle. Now Narada is inquiring from Brahma, and we had just read how Vyasadeva learned from Narada. Purport. As soon as Brahma was born from the abdominal lotus, abdominal lotus of Vishnu, he was impregnated with Vedic knowledge, and therefore he is known as Veda Garbha, or a Vedantist from the embryo. Without Vedic knowledge or perfect, infallible knowledge, no one can create anything. All scientific knowledge and perfect knowledge are Vedic. One can get all types of information from the Vedas. And as such, Brahma was impregnated with all perfect knowledge so that it was possible for him to create. Thus, Brahma knew the perfect description of the creation as it was exactly apprised to him by the Supreme Lord Hari. Brahma, on being questioned by Narada, told Narada exactly what he had heard directly from the Lord. Narada, again, exactly told the same thing to Vyas. Vyas told it to Sukadev exactly what he heard from Narada. And Sukadev was going to repeat the same statements he had heard from Vyas. That is the way of Vedic understanding. 
The Vedic language of the Vedas can be revealed only by the above-mentioned disciplic succession, and not otherwise. There is no use in theories. Knowledge must be factual. There are many things that are complicated, and one cannot understand them unless they are explained by one who knows them. The Vedic knowledge is also very difficult to know and must be learned by the above-mentioned system. Otherwise, it is not at all understood. Sukadev Goswami therefore prayed for the mercy of the Lord so that he might be able to repeat the very same message that was spoken directly by the Lord to Brahma or what was directly spoken by Brahma to Narada. Therefore, the statements of creation explained by Sukadev Goswami are not at all, as the mundaners suggest, theoretical, but are perfectly correct. One who hears these messages and tries to assimilate them gets perfect information of the material creation. How fortunate we are. People are in so much ignorance. Look at the world today. Holy moly. It's in a big flux right now. There's some heavy duty energy around. COVID, elections, confusion, Black Friday, holy <laughs> moly, it's a big mess. But we, 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 we're observers. We're so fortunate not to be caught up in the world. These people are in so much pain and illusion and fighting and not understanding the goal of life. They don't understand anything, practically speaking. But Srila Prabhupada and these Vedas were trying to make them available, trying to understand them. One of the things that I kind of envisioned as I was going through this was how systematic the process is. Just like learning a language. First of all, you have to learn the alphabet when we were young. Then you get these cards and you learn little words and how to spell them and their definitions. And it's a gradual process that takes years to understand even how to speak. And then you start to think in that language. And then you start to conceive and see the world through that media that you've learned how to speak. And then you start to relate to others. And finally, by the time you're now, it's so spontaneous, you don't even think about that initial um, foundation which, which it all built by. But in sadhana bhakti, vaiti sadhana bhakti, it's the same process. You hear, and gradually little bits start to, and you become enlightened little by little, and gradually it becomes more and more. And what we can expect in the future is just like Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur, we'll be experiencing it just like kissing Krishna, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. There's one last clip of a Srila Prabhupada. Uh, talking about the Vedas. It's in Hyderabad, 1972. And this man, uh, there's a, a, a Prabhupada at the end of the class. It's going to be that one um, pran on the desktop. It says Prabhupada Vedic Evidence. And the man asks, does the jiva, does the living entity have rupa? Does it have form? Rupa means form. And this is Srila Prabhupada's answer. Just double click that Prabhupada's Vedic Evidence and it should come up. Uh, left hand side, big orange PowerPoint icon, yes, to your left. Do we have sound? Not. Okay, let's try go to YouTube. Srila Prabhupada on Vedic evidence. Now go into YouTube. There on top of the uh, on top of the screen, there's a search, Google, there. Srila Prabhupada on Vedic evidence. No, it won't be there. On? 
on Vedic evidence. Dr. Prabhupada speaking. There it is, that talking. Yeah. Okay, we're having. Is, is there a button you're supposed to push to make it so that it can be heard? Sri Devi, can you help? Still not. It should work now. Everybody at home is hearing it. <laughs> so our verse again from Lord Chaitanya, speaking to the people who have come from Kaliagat. Haradinya samvira srishta satchirananda visvara svavidya samrito jiva sanklesha nirakaraka. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller, is always full of transcendental bliss and is accompanied by the potencies known as ladini and samvit. The conditioned soul, however, is always covered by ignorance and embarrassed by the threefold miseries of life. Thus, he is a treasure house of all kinds of tribulations. Any comments, questions? Samapriya? Oh, okay. That loop you can see, my body can see, I, I can see your body. This is one of the loop of gross. Gross roof, corn. And as that, I know you have got mine. And you know I have got mine. But you cannot see, you can simply perceive. And another roof, the soul, that is so fine that it is not possible at the present time. It is described in the Shastra one ten thousand part of the upper portion of the hair. But it has got a root. Not that there is no root. There is root. Keshadva satabhadasya satadhatal chitasya jiva bhadva sabhigyam. So anantaya kalpa. There is magnitude. Just like we say geometrically, point has no length, no breadth. But actually that's not fact. It has got length and breadth, but we cannot measure it. Similarly, Atma, the soul, has got length and breadth, but it is beyond our perception. Therefore we have to accept Sruti. This is called Subheda, Vedic Indians. Veda said, here is the magnitude. That is Vedic understanding. Those who are followers of Vedas, they will not argue. Whatever is stated in the Vedas, they will accept. That is Vedic. There are many examples. I can give one example. Just like in the Vedas it is stated that the stool of animal is impure. And if one touches, Stool, he must take bathing. 
But in the Vedas it is also stated that the cow dung, which is also the stool of an animal, that is pure. And still, at least those who are Vedic followers, they take cow dung as pure, any, anywhere impure they smear over with cow dung. And that is fact also. Cow dung is full of antiseptic properties. It has been analyzed. Uh, so the Vedas uh, uh, gives us injunction both ways. The stool is impure, but this stool is pure. And those who are followers of Vedas, they accept both. When they touch the stool of another animal, they take bathing. But the stool of cow is taken to the deity worship room. Similarly, Shankha, corn cell. Corn cell is the bone of an animal. It is said that if you touch the bone of a dead animal, you have to, you become impure. But corn cell is also the bone of an animal. It is taken to the deity room for violating. Uh, therefore, there are so many things which is beyond our perception, knowledge. We have to take shelter of the Vedic Indian. That is called Vedic. Therefore, our method, Vedic method, is as soon as we speak something, we immediately give evidence from the Vedas. Then it is perfect. There is no question of arguing. Just like in the law court, the lawyer pleading something, but if, if he gives quotation from previous judgment and section of law, it is accepted. So the forms of the ātmā, there are three kinds of forms. Uh, one you can see directly, this bodily form. Another you can simply perceive. And another you can accept only on the Vedic injunction. But there are forms. Sir, so the examples Prabhupada gave, it's self-contradictory, but yet we accept it. And he's talking about that which is beyond our perception. Nobody sees the soul, no one knows the size of the soul. But it's given very clearly what it is, distinctly, scientifically. You accept it or not accept it, that's what the mind can do. And the whole concept of, the, of this Vedas is that, is that by, just like with the learning of the language, by learning the different pieces and how they all fit together. Srila Prabhupada, what a genius. In this day and age, when people are so misguided, his words, uh, that Oma Jnana to me on this, yeah, right? born in ignorance, but with the torchlight of knowledge, he's, he, his, his words are transforming people from around the world to take to this process and uh, develop their love for Krishna so they can also kiss Krishna and receive that uh, information from his lotus lips. Samapriya had a comment or a question? Hare Krishna. Um, I just wondered, uh, if someone is practicing music diligently, is that a qualification for him to play music for Krishna when he goes back to Godhead? No. Okay. Because we hear from the Vedic scriptures, that is the qualification that makes one. It's not that we can uh. improve our mundane talents without hearing. That, that's what actually Srila Prabhupada gave us this wonderful, as he was saying, this wonderful opportunity to hear the truth. And it's very esoteric because all we do is hear and then we become, we 
become enlightened by hearing, not by engaging in some material activity, whether it's any kind of profession, whatever it is, that is not going to give us satisfaction and knowledge. Is that it? Because Good there's point. a misconception that people think that, okay, I will improve my, I will become the greatest physician or musician or scientist and this will qualify me for everything and anything. But actually all we have to do is become humble and submissive and hear the, that, the source of knowledge. It just, it just clicked on me <laughs> after all these years. Finally, <laughs> I, it, it, the Vedic scriptures are the truth, no matter what they say, in the women's issue and that issue and all the different issues. We don't need to have any issues. All we have to do is hear purely and become servants of the right thing, because basically we're all servants. Anyway, thank you so much. That was an opener. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful class, as always. I'm going to ask a question. It's going to really show my um, not reading enough. But this is something that's always confused me a little bit. When exactly, and I think you might have said it and I got distracted for a second, when exactly did the Mayavadi philosophy really start to, when did it come? Was it the beginning of Kali Yuga? No. When they Mayavadi to... philosophy um, is kind of like sticks in a current in a river. Sometimes it goes under, sometimes it comes up and is visible. But especially uh, Lord Shiva was instructed by the Lord to advent and propound the Mayavad philosophy using the Vedas because Lord Buddha had previously decried the Vedas to stop the animal sacrifices. Lord Buddha, um, when he appeared, was it 1,500 years ago? And Sankaracharya... Yeah. 786. He appeared in the seven in the 700s, mid, eight, uh, mid 786 exactly. Thank you. So, and and by hearing and learning that whole history, you can see how it developed. So, Kim Acharya started the philosophy. He wrote a commentary called Sarirakya Basya on Vedanta Sutra, which is part of the Vedas. So therefore, his commentary started to in influence the intellectual class of people back to Vedic mantras and Vedic hymns and Vedic way of life. So yes, that's what he wrote. And when he wrote that commentary, that's when Mayavad philosophy began to expand and expound because of his presence. Marumati? Um, thank you again for your class. Uh -huh. The um, commentary you mentioned about Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, mm. um, the thought came to my mind was like, mm, um, this is bringing down, so to speak, I don't know what words to use, but bringing uh, the nectar that Krishna exchanges with the gopis is kind of like bringing it to a lower level. Um, but okay. I, but the fact is that one way to see it is actually bringing um, the relishing Shrimad Bhagavatam on a very high level. And um, I was actually appreciating what he was saying was, at least then I was, as I was processing in my mind, I was thinking that it's actually bringing the Bhagavatam, the, the, the nectar actually that is in the Shrimad Bhagavatam and we don't realize what nectar it is, and it is to that extent. So, oh, um, maybe some comment you have. Yes. Thank you again, Prabhuji. Yeah. Uh, so, the question I have is on the Achintya Veda Ved. Uh, Achintya means uh, inconceivable, Ved means different, and Abed means indifferent. So, the way I understood from what you just said is uh, we, the, the Jivatma and the Lord, 
we are different from him and we at the same time we are also not we are also indifferent from him and that's inconceivable concept we cannot understand how we are different and how we are not different and that's called achinta bhed abhed philosophy is that correct understanding yes yeah perfect okay. yes okay. very okay. Um, thank you because i have been struggling to understand this achinta bhed abhed for a long time i have asked so just like questions. that example of the cow dung uh-huh. it's not logical yes you can't say that the, you touch the stool of an animal you must take bath you've become impure but this this one you touch it you 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 can take it into the deity room that's totally against what you just said yeah. but we accept it and you can see that it's true but it's kind of inconceivable that you can contradict yourself but still speak a truth yeah. same thing with the conch conch shell okay. thank uh, you and, and another one is that we're all one in this temple room you can say the group of devotees in the temple room that's one and we're all included in that statement mm-hmm. but we're not all one entity mm-hmm. we're all individuals within this place yeah. so it can be understood but it's it takes intelligence and you know enlightenment so okay so another question i have um, so narada was a uh, guru of vyas yes. and he has instructed him so and he compiled um, vyas um, he compiled um, ved and and uh, mahabharat and everything and then he instructed him again and then yes. he compiled uh, bhagavatam yes that's why it's considered the cream just like you milk the cow you have the milk gradually that cream comes to the top okay so why he did not instruct him on the first place so he can write bhagavatam right <laughs> right in the beginning it takes time okay to understand yeah okay thank you prabhu ji ja all glories to shri prabhu pad shri chaitanya mahaprabhu ki jai